Hi, uh, good evening friends. Uh, welcome to second part of UGC pre-coaching. Uh, if you want more and more videos, please subscribe the channels. Uh, today we will discuss uh, 2004 question paper, question number uh, 11 to 20, 20. Okay, let us start from question number 11. Suppose x and y are two integer variables having values 0x 5a uh, 5ab6 and 0x 61cd respectively. The result of applying bitwise operator and to x and y will be. So here friends, uh, two hexadecimal numbers are given. Hexadecimal numbers usually start from uh, 0x symbols. Uh, as we know, octal numbers start from 0c and hexadecimal numbers are uh, starts from 0x. And in hexadecimal numbers, uh, it contains uh, total 16 characters, uh, 0 to 9 and a to f. Okay. So here we have to calculate the uh, result of AND operation, bitwise AND operation. So here AND operation means if uh, both values are true, we get answer true. If any one is false, answer is false. Okay. So take first one. 5 AB 6. So 6 is equal to binary 6, 0, double 1, 0. And B is equal to, actually B is equal to 11. So we write using 1, 0, double 1. And A is equal to 10. We write uh, using 1, 0, 1, 0. So here 1, 0, 1, 0 means 8 plus 2. And uh, 5 is equal to 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay. So next we have to convert 6, 1 CD into binary uh, hexadecimal number. Uh, in hexadecimal, uh, hexadecimal number, for each digit we use four bit, uh, four binary bits. Uh, okay, so D is equal to double one zero one, C is equal to double one double zero, one is equal to double zero one, six is equal to double one zero. So we have to perform AND operation. So take both numbers. If both are uh, true, means both are one. Answer is one. Otherwise, answer is zero. So, first case, we can observe that we have 0, 1. So, answer is 0. Second case also, 1, 0. So, any 1 is 0, answer is 0. Both must be 1 for answer uh, 1. Okay. So, in third case, we have 1, 1. So, we get 1. Fourth case, 0, 1. Answer is 0. Like this, we calculate uh, whole value. Next. So, next we have to convert again this number into hexadecimal number. Okay. So, first one is 0, 1 double 0. So this is equal to 4. Second one is 1 triple 0. It is equal to 8. Uh, third one is 4 zeros e equal to 0. Fourth one is 0 1 double 0. It is equal to 4. So total answer is OX 40 84. So uh, which uh, answer is B. Okay. Uh, uh, answer is B. Okay. Go for next one. Uh, question number 12. Consider the following statements. Uh, here one code is C code is given. We have to calculate the uh, uh, resultant value of i, j, k. So int i is equal to 4, j is equal to 3, k is equal to 0. And we have to calculate the value of this expression, k value. So here in this expression, uh, uh, free order increment and post order increments are used. And uh, actually, priority of free order and post order incre incre uh, increment decrement operators are more than our arithmetic operators. So first, uh, we take the priority operators. So this is considered as a plus plus i, means it is free increment of i. So next one, again, here we have 3 minus. Uh, so 3 minus values is equal to, uh, we have to consider this is 3 minus is equal to minus 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 j. So, minus of uh, free order decrement of j. So, next plus i plus plus. So, again it is post order increment of i minus 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 j. Uh, free order decrement of j plus j plus plus post order increment of j. So, here uh, friends in direct way also we can calculate the values. Uh, no need to uh, get confused. Directly see how many times i is incremented. So i i is incremented two times. 
so uh, in any answer we have four answers in any answer if we have answer i is equal to 6 uh, that will be our correct answer so directly we can say that answer c is correct okay so i incremented two times okay and uh, uh, j uh, two times decremented and one times incremented so uh, overall uh, result is uh, one time decremented so initial value of j was 3 so one time if we decrement j we get 2 so i is equal to 6 j is equal to 2 and uh, if you solve this expression we get k is equal to 8 okay so the question number 13 what is the value of arithmetic expression so here we have to solve this arithmetic expression so friends to solve this expression we must know the um, order of execution of uh, uh, all operators okay so uh, here uh, associativity and uh, associativity plays a very important role okay so usually for uh, arithmetic operations we follow the left to right uh, associativity means uh, uh, first we solve the leftmost uh, uh, operation perform leftmost operation and we move towards the right operations okay um, so first uh, uh, and also priority of uh, operators is very important so here we have uh, three operators multiplication represented by star division represented by forward slash and minus okay so first thing is we have to check the priority so priority of multiplication and division are more compared to addition and subtraction so here first we have to perform the multiplication and division and both are at same priority so if we interchange the order is also okay but before performing minus this minus we have to perform the multiplication and division okay so here first thing is we have to perform the multiplication or division and we usually start from left to right so first we solve the uh, per, uh, solve the first multiplication operator so 2 into 3 so it is equal to 6 next again uh, we have three operators division minus and multiplication so highest priority is division and uh, min, uh, division and multiplication and uh, both are at equal priority so from left to right we solve the equation so leftmost operator is division 6 by 4 so 6 by 4 is equal to 1 minus and uh, after this we perform the multiplication 0 into 2 0 so 1 minus 0 is equal to 1 so answer is b answer is b okay question number 14 a function object what is a function object is an instance of a class for which operator uh, bracket is a member function so it is a instance of class for which operator bracket is a member function answer b is an instance of a class for which operator arrow is a member function answer number 3 is a pointer to any function answer number 4 is a member function of a class so if function object usually represents the function and using that name of object name of function we can access the function so indirectly we can say function is a pointer to any function object of a function is pointer to any function so answer is c okay question number 15 polymorphism means what is polymorphism so having many form is considered as a polymorphism okay so polymer polymorphism actually includes uh, virtual inheritance operator overloading loading templates but actual meaning of polymer uh, poly if we think about actual meaning uh, we have to mark answer b run time identification within a class hierarchy answer b uh question number 16 the year model is expressed in terms of so actually what is year year model year model means entity relationship model okay so here main objective of drawing this year model is 
identifying the relation between the entities and uh, so here important uh, uh, objects are entity and relation so here uh, we have three answers one is entities second answer the relationship among the entities third one is the attribute of the entities so actually all three are uh, related to uh, very uh, near to a uh, year model uh, but here according to us is answer is c uh, the relationship among entities and uh, the attributes of the entities thank you so question number 17 specialization is a cash process so usually in object oriented uh, uh, object object oriented programming we perform two important things one is generalization and one is specialization so generalization means actually taking some uh, objects we move towards the root node means we go on generalizing means bottom up process so specialization means from root we go uh, uh, move towards the bottom so specialization means top down method okay so here uh, we can uh, answer is specialization is a top down process so answer is a uh, so here we can give one example. I, uh, I want to give one example for specialization. So if you take uh, example of vehicle, okay. So if we uh, want to uh, describe some vehicle more specifically, so more specifically means whether it is a two wheeler or four wheeler. So two wheeler or and four wheeler both belongs to vehicle. So together we can say vehicle, but it is generalized name of two wheeler. And four wheeler also we can say four wheeler also comes under the vehicle. Okay. So if we want specific means we say two wheeler and four wheeler generalizes vehicle. Okay. Answer is A. Thank you. So question number 18. The complete completeness constraint has rules. Uh, super type, subtype, total, total specialization, partial specialization, uh, specialization, generalization all of the above so here answer is uh, complete net constraints on specialization can be total or partial specialization so answer is b question number 19 the entity type on which the dash type depends is called the identifying owner so here uh, we have four answers, a strong entity, B, relationship, three, weak entity, D, A diagram. Actually, see, the entity type on which the dash type depends is called the identifying owner. So here, uh, usually in entities, we have two types. One is strong entity. So uh, strong entity means identifying that strong entity, uh, entity is straightforward. Uh, it is not depend on any other uh, entity. But weak entity is a entity which uh, which we cannot identify directly. It depends upon some other. That's why it is considered as a weak entity. Uh, so here answer is C. So question number twenty match the following. Uh, so in normal uh, normal forms we have total uh, five types of normal form uh, second normal form third normal form fourth normal form and fifth normal forms okay so usually second normal form is depends on primary key uh, sorry um, it is uh, depends upon uh, atomicity value uh, first normal form is depends upon atomicity value second normal form is depends upon primary key Third normal is for uh, normal form is for transitive relationship, and uh, fourth BCNF for uh, multi-valued uh, dependency, and fifth fourth normal form is uh, related to multi-valued dependency for uh, two relationship with multi-valued dependency. So answer is uh, so as uh, as we discussed earlier, second normal form is related to primary primary key constraint so answer is c 
contains no partial function differences so and uh, third normal form is trans uh, transitive uh, dependency fourth normal form is multi valued attribute uh, removed and fifth normal form is uh, no joint dependency it should not have joint dependency so overall answer we don't have any answers here uh, so that's why answer is actually for one question number uh, for one we have to get 3 uh, c and for two we have to get a and for three we have to get b and for four we have to get d okay so, so thank you very much so i request you to uh, subscribe our uh, channel and uh, motivate for uh, preparing more and more videos thank you